Hey everyone, Matt from Lawrence Systems here, and today we're going to get up and running with Olama. Olama is a free and open source tool that acts as both a manager and a runtime for locally hosted large language models, and we're going to install it on both a Docker host on a Debian 12 machine that I've got here at the house, as well as a Windows 11 machine behind me, and we're going to interact with it in a number of different ways. Let's get started. <laughs> Olama significantly reduces the barrier to entry when it comes to working with locally hosted LLMs. It also provides you with a significant degree of privacy versus third-party services and ones hosted in the cloud. If you're going to supply data to this LLM, it's not leaving your network. The only way it will is if you offer tools to it to access that allows it to do so. Now, with that said, let's take a look at some of the models that are available through Olama. Gemma, DeepSeek, everyone knows about DeepSeek. Right, Llama, that's the one that's uh, from Meta. I use Llama 3.2 quite a bit. We have models from Microsoft, from IBM, you name it, it's here. Now, if there's something here that, maybe there's something here, maybe there's nothing here that you find terribly interesting. Maybe you wanna look for an uncensored or an unrestricted LLM, something that's a little bit different. Well, you're in luck because Olama does have the ability to run a number of different formats for models and one that it does offer support for is GGUF. And that is a format available over at the Hugging Face website. And there's over 100,000 models available. So there's no shortage to explore. But before you can begin to explore, we have to have Olama running on your system. So let's take a quick look at the Docker page for the Olama project, and we'll go from there. Here we are at the Olama page on Docker Hub. And as you can see, if you want to run Olama only using CPU-based resources, you can do so very quickly using the single line. You might get it installed very quickly, but you're probably going to find it's not going to respond very quickly without GPU resources to work with. If you're using an NVIDIA GPU, you can install the NVIDIA Container Toolkit before getting started with your Docker container and doing so will allow your container to have access to your local GPU resources and make a significant difference when it comes to things like token generation speed. And I'm going to show you the difference between those two. Now, in order to install the NVIDIA Container Toolkit, you're either going to use apter yum as your uh, package manager and simply follow the instructions that are on screen right here. They are very simple. They only took me a few minutes, but it's already installed in my system. And the last thing I want to do is make a change that's going to prevent me from getting this video moving forward. So we're just going to pretend that we did it. Now, that said, let's, hey, let's take a look at my system that I've got running today. This is a machine that's running Debian 12. It has an old system pull Xeon processor in it, 64 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 3050 GPU with 6 gigs of RAM. It's not the most powerful system in the world, but it's one that works well for the research that I do here at the house, for projects, for exploring how LLMs work, as well as quite a bit of work that gets done at Lawrence Systems. I'm gonna show you a little bit of that by the end of the video too. All right, now that we're on the system, let's take a look at the Docker Compose file we're gonna use for our first demo. Very simple, it cites Olama slash Olama as being the image to use. We're giving this container the name of Olama demo so that it does not conflict with my existing container. And we have a volume that's being defined and that's where all of your configuration files, your models, etc., are going to be held. It's nice that it's just really quick drag and drop if I need to move the system elsewhere. And that's also why I have it running on Docker. I've got more than one system that I like to move things around on as I experiment and learn. We're gonna make sure that the container is responding on port 11434. For all the elite speakers out there, yes, that does spell llama. And we're gonna make sure that the container continues running unless it's been stopped. So let's go ahead and first stop my existing instance of a llama. Cool, that is done. And now we can go ahead and bring this brand new test instance up. So we're gonna go ahead with docker sudo docker pose up dash d and that'll be quick because i already have the image downloaded we are up and running we have olama on this machine we're going to connect directly to the container so that we can pull the llama 3.2 model file down and then we're going to ask it one of my favorite questions to ask uh, the command to begin working with Olama from the command line is simply Olama run and the model that you want to work with. So we're going to do Llama 3.2. 
oops, LL AMA 3.2. And given that the image does not, the, 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 the model doesn't exist on the system, it's gonna pull it. So we're gonna take a couple seconds, maybe do a little fast forwarding. Okay, well, you know what? Well, we wait for that to download and you saw some of the other files that I'm working on here. I got a couple of notes. I'm gonna share a prompt that I've been using to demo LLMs lately because it's, it's a prompt that has nothing to do with business. It's a little weird. It gets a couple of laughs and the responses it gets from LLMs are unique every single time. My prompt is, if RoboCop was real and had like six Xeon processors, what kind of cooling system would it need? <laughs> That's the most ridiculous question I could come up with. And it's the kind of question, or it is the type of question, it is a question that came up to me uh, at like 3.30 one morning when I woke up and couldn't get back to sleep. And instead of sitting in my bed pondering what it was, I fired up that system threw the question over to the LLM, let it answer it. And the answer was silly, yet detailed enough with an assumed level of precision that allowed me to go back to sleep. So one could say that having a locally hosted LLM in my home helps me sleep better at night. All right, this has got to be done by now. Let's take a look. Okay, the model is loaded into memory. Let's ask what it would do for Robo. <laughs> Six Xeon processors, which would be an extremely powerful and resource intensive configuration. He would likely exceed one kilowatt. Air cooled liquid met <laughs> air cooled liquid metal heat sinks. The heat sinks use liquid metal to conduct heat away from the processor and other components. High flow air coolers, graphene based thermal interfaces, chill plates. Wow. <laughs> Look at the level of detail we're getting from this. And this is for Robocop. I, you have to appreciate that the very final design consideration was reliability and maintainability. RoboCop's cooling system must be designed with redundancy, modularity, and easy maintenance in mind to minimize downtime. We're talking about operational... <laughs> We're talking about operational efficiencies for a fictional robot police officer with an LLM. The future is here, folks. Anyway, okay, we're done with that. Goodbye. You just saw how quickly we were able to get an LLM running using Docker. And what we're going to do really quickly is run it one more time. But we're going to add this verbose flag to it because I want to figure out what the token generation rate on this is. It's always going to be a little bit different, but I just want to have a number for us to work with. Let's see what happens. I'm guessing something like 15 to 20 tokens a second. 14 tokens per second is a number that's good enough to act as a proof of concept of what's possible in your system. But you're going to have a hard time doing much analysis or working with, say, applications that would integrate with Olama at this rate because you'd find the response times to be fairly slow. Let's see what it looks like when I get my GPU in place instead. As you can see, this Docker Compose file is a little bit different from the previous one. Here we're listing specific resources that the container has access to. In this case, the GPU that's on my system. If I had more than one GPU on here and I just wanted to be able to use one of them, I would be able to put a number starting with the number zero where count is. In this case, I've got one. I'm just going to use the term all. Be done with it. All right, here we go. All right, we're up and running. Let's connect and uh, see what we can do here. Once again, we're going to pull the Llama 3.2 model. Okay. We now have the Llama 3.2 model loaded, and I'm going to go ahead and ask my amazing question about RoboCop, and we'll see what happens.
<laughs> Six Xeon processors, for example, E5-2690. So ones that are newer than the system that this LLM is on. All right. Wow. That was a much quicker response, wasn't it? And as usual, I forgot to ask it to be verbose because I always get excited. So let's do that again. And even better, we get to see the response a second time and see how it's different. No harm, no foul. See, this time it didn't cite, oh, Intel Xeon W1375X or equivalent. It's just throwing Xeon processor types out of nowhere. I love it. <laughs> Although, here we go. Evaluation rate was uh, 53.65 tokens per second. That is a significant leap from the number we had earlier, which I believe was like 13 or 14, 1401, something like that. This is a number that's much closer to where you're going to be able to use this by integrating it into workflows you have maybe in your workplace or your personal work, whatever it is, integrations with third-party tools that are also here on your local network. Getting up to a rate of about 100 plus is where things really get fun. But 53, great for me. Now that we've installed Olama in two separate containers on my uh, Docker host, let's take a quick look at how easy it is to interact with it via an API as opposed to the direct connection we were using earlier. Now you can see here I just pasted a curl command. It's asking the same exact question of RoboCop. It's using the same exact model. We're connecting to this machine's local IP on port 11434. We're going to hit enter and uh, I think it'll probably take a few seconds before we get a response because I'm streaming to, uh, I have streaming set to false. That's just going to allow the response to come out as one big chunk as opposed to an array of responses. And let's see what happens. And here we go. Here's the response. Another great response. We're citing power usage, cooling capacities, different technologies. And we did that from command line using curl. Pretty simple stuff. We could also use Postman. You could use uh, pretty much anything that'll allow you to interact with the API to do exactly what I did. And that opens up a lot of possibilities, especially locally, when doing research or pushing data back and forth or integrating Olama into tools that you have that maybe you can integrate on your own. Let's move on to a Windows 11 installation. Okay, this is uh, a Windows installation wizard just like any other. Install. Oh, wait. There's even less steps than usual, wasn't it? Just like the installation on my Docker host, commands are the same, Olama, run, and in this case, Llama 3, 2, because that's the model I want to run. All right, it's time to ask about RoboCop one last time. Ooh, if we were to imagine a, future ro a futuristic robotic law enforcement officer. I like it. liquid cooling, air cooling, heat pipes. It's interesting that the approach being taken this time by the model is much more, uh, I don't want to say practical, practical is not the right word, but much more PC oriented versus some of the, uh, the technologies used earlier. I wonder what the difference there is. That's interesting. And as usual, we're going to ask it a second time because I forgot to go verbose. You think I would learn by now? This is the third time in the video. Maybe I just want to ask it more RoboCop questions. Let's dive into the world of RoboCop and explore some cooling solutions that could support a hypothetical, highly advanced law enforcement robot with six Xeon processors. You know, he would have the biggest Intel, in <laughs> Intel inside badge on him, right? I like the fact that it keeps saying it's a hypothetical scenario. By the way, Evaluation rate is a little bit over 25 tokens per second. That's not bad considering this doesn't use a particularly, uh, it doesn't use a dedicated GPU for anything at the moment. It does have a GPU from AMD, but it's not being used at the moment. We're going to see how that performs in a future video. But, you know, so far in this video, and we're almost done here today, we've looked at how to install Olama in a Docker container on a, on a Linux system, which, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing on other types of hosts. We've seen it be installed with absolute ease on a Windows system, which is, which is just fantastic, if you ask me. Security considerations, I'm sure, yes, but that's not a part of today's conversation. Today is about getting started, dipping your toes in, and maybe beginning to ask those questions, because that means you're getting close to figuring out ways to use this for yourself. 
One last thing I'm going to show in today's video is how I get a little extra insight into some of the online shop orders that you guys place with us. This is pretty neat. Let me just switch back over to my daily machine. Okay, so now that I am back on my main machine, I've got this Python script, a super, super basic Python script that I whipped up. I think I found a version of this on from a Google search. So it's not 100% original, but I think it's a great place to start. So I'm gonna share it with you. Here we are, it's right on my screen. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling in data from a CSV file. It's nothing but anonymized information. Yeah, anonymized is a good enough word. There's there's nothing really that's going to identify anyone. It's just timestamps and dollar values. And I'm gonna feed it into the model with a basic message. The provided data is a log of online sales in CSV format in two columns order date, and order value in US dollars. Analyze and cite any patterns related to order date and or time. Be verbose, <laughs> just in case I forget. Provide as many details as possible. And that prompt is followed by the, con the contents of the CSV file. All right, here we go. That's the contents of the CSV file. As you can see, those are timestamps in UTC followed by dollar values for each one of the orders. Here we go. Wait, it's referencing other people's info. It has a bibliography, people. <laughs> wow, okay, I wasn't expecting that. That was cool. Uh, the provided CSV data contains a log of online sales in two columns, order date and order value. To analyze the patterns related to the order date and or time, we will employ various statistical and graphical techniques. Okay, so we've got time series analysis. It's examining the data, finding two distinct peaks in sales. It's finding both daily and weekly patterns and purchasing hourly patterns. That's a little bit more granular than I need, but, and yes, there, there are potential ways to optimize sales. There's a reminder that maybe having a sale going on for springtime, which is around where we are right now, is a good idea. Let's see if I come up with something as a result of this. Let me see, is there anything else that I wanna share with you today related? Yes, there's one last thing. There is an open source project called Fabric that is worth looking at. It is something that we use here at Lawrence Systems to do things like summarize videos that we want to look further into, or to even summarize our own content, to, to further optimize what we do, make sure that we're, we're putting information out that is, is helpful, makes good sense, and sometimes summarizing something gets through the, uh, the noise and helps us determine that. And we use Fabric as a tool to do that. It's, host, it's, it's installed locally on this Docker host and uses my Olama installation. And uh, I think it should work fine with the instances up right now. So let's see what happens if we try to summarize the video I did a couple of weeks ago on Home Assistant. Hopefully it says something really nice. I don't know. Okay, this is a video transcript of a person setting up Home Assistant, a popular open source home automation platform using a Raspberry Pi and Docker. Here's a summary of the main points. Person creates an account, Home Assistant, they install Home Assistant, they configure Docker container, uh, <laughs> Zig device, short for Zigbee, okay, LLM. Uh, I tried to integrate with Amazon Alexa using a chatbot feature. That's actually not exactly what I did, but it's not terribly far. And if I wanted to just get an idea of what a video contained before spending the time watching the entire thing, not bad. Now, there's a lot more that we can do with large language models that are hosted locally. And today's video was just to get that first step going, to get something that's actually running locally on your network that you can experiment with, learn from, and uh, hopefully get some really cool ideas while working with. If there's anything that you are working with that, that happens as a result of this video, leave it below in the comments. I'd love to know. This is something that I'm working on on a regular basis. I'm also integrating with Home Assistant, so expect more videos on two, those two topics among a lot of other things happening. I kind of just mentioned that there's a PC review happening, so that's going to be the next video you guys see from me. And until then, take care of yourselves. Have a good one.